Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Crusader Kings 2 Holy Fury Pagan Tutorial. We are a few years in. We are still our hideous um, High Chief Puku, Puku Varus. And we also have a bit of a troop problem. If you check here, one lovely thing is you can hover over your army levies and you can see how many troops you have. The green number is how many you currently have. The yellow slash gold color shows you what you could have in terms of from immense potential vassal allies. So uh, we have a total of 770. From our immense, we only have 770 troops available out of 1,343. And you can see that here, if you come and hover over, we're missing eh, 35 troops there. From this county, we're missing all of those troops because this ha the garrison has to replenish first before the actual levies can replenish which makes sense you want to recruit men and train them to protect your holdings before you want to recruit men and train them to go fighting wars for you and we're missing some troops here and we're missing a lot of troops here we also have two malices here if we take a look and hover over these red x's if you see something that's green on one of your holdings or along this bar right here that means it's a good sign we don't have anything green uh, <laughs> but if you see something that's red it's bad if you are colorblind the easiest way then to just be hover over it and we have a malice because new administration we make less tax and the levy reinforcement rate is seriously in trouble there for another uh, 10 months or so till 9th of january in 771 and also it's also recently conquered which pretty much destroys the levy size destroys the taxes it, it's just bad and that disappears in a couple months in july so it'll start improving but until then this county does like nothing for us it's a deadweight province it really is sad that we did let this one get attacked but we were in a rush to get this guy um and that's also we can see the potential vassal ally troops because we are tribal and now that we have a vassal, you will see it uh, when we go to war. Because we are tribal, we have a tribe. We do not have a castle like someone over here. We ain't that smart yet, y'all. Sorry. I'm from the south. It, <laughs> I'm probably not the right excuse for that, but yeah. Uh, you talk with a southern accent, people do discount your IQ. Uh, well, let's not get into that. Uh, okay. So, we go back up here to the military, and there's our troops, there's the unraised, raised, we have no troops raised, the unraised ones are 772, 771, and this is the total possible, it says max total, that's our max total possible. Uh, vassals, we get zero troops from vassals, which we discussed that already, and then we also have this lovely button right here. Once we are in war, we can push that, and we can call our vassal in. The thing is, our vassal hates us. And so he does not have to answer the call if he doesn't want to. And he's probably not going to. He's probably going to say, no, I hate you. I refuse. Which is a bit of an issue. And it's not something we can really fix at the moment. Because that whole usurp title for the next uh, hundred years is really bad. But we needed a duchy. So, you know, you donate to the cause, dude. And your son hates us a bit. For short reign but that's it so hopefully uh we'll make you what we could do is we can make him a commander he can't be much worse and we'll stick him in the front lines and hope he dies <laughs> in, in glorious battle that's one thing you can do sticking someone as a commander does tend to end up with them dead a lot of times um yeah just just an fyi so if your liege is trying to make you a commander refuse if you are a vassal but we're not doing that this time. All right. So, we have to wait for our troops to go back up. Because we only have 770. And if we go looking at our, vas our, our vassals, our future vassals around us, this guy's a little less troops. But it would still be a bit of a tight um, attack. Tight squeeze. And these guys have a lot more. Well, a good size more. 800. 100 or so more. This guy has a very good amount more. So what we're going to do is we're going to even the playing field a little bit while we wait. We're going to raise our troops and we're going to mark them as toggling looters 
because that does change it so that they cost us less money because we are at peace. If you are at war, there we go, point 11. I take them off. 1.15. That is a huge difference considering if we hover over up here, we make 0.41 a month. So if we're paying 1.15 a month, we're losing money. But if we're at peace and we toggle looters, we are now paying 0.11. It's a lot more affordable. We're still going to make money every month. And we're going to even make more money. Because we're going to toggle these lovely men as looters. As we have done, we're going to let them uh, stack up here together. As they slowly go. There we go. They automatically compile. Um, you cannot toggle this button if you are at war. But remember how we talked about that the... Um, it says here that we can raid infidel... Rulers can raid infidel neighbors for loot. Well, it's a lie. You can raid anyone that's touching. If we had boats, we could take boats and go and raid other people. But we will talk about that later. We do not have boats. We do not have cheaper boats. We are completely stuck on this river, which is not a bad place to be. But, you know, that's where we are. But we can raid anyone, that, any province that is ad adjacent to ours, and it will automatically send the loot back home to us. If we tried to raid, uh, like, Toro Pets here, the money would not go to us. We would still siege this down, destroy it, hurt them, but the money would just disappear into, into thin air. Apparently, our, our troops refuse to carry money home. Uh, we're also going to stick our dude right there in the center, just in case. And we're going to go raid... We're probably going to attack this guy first. So we're going to come raid him, beat down his land, take all his money... Which also makes him a lot easier to defeat. So this is a very sneaky thing to do. Uh, as long as you know you can easily reach the counties. Come here and raid. And one thing to notice when we're raiding is that we have this bar. The county loot. Which has this little line in the middle of it. So this up here is the loot that's open outside the walls. You can just run in, grab it, and go. The loot under this bar is protected by the fort, by the castle, by the walls. Uh, if we go and look at some other provinces, like let's look at Constantinople. They have Theodosian walls, which says fort level. Fort level is the important part. Castle, castle walls, castle fortifications. It The bar gets more from the other baronies that are there. Fort level five, fort level point eight, because this is a city. Cities and churches do not have high fort levels. Castles do. Tribes are meh. But so this one, there's 183 total county tax here. That's their year income. And if you hover over here, loot protected by, oops, sorry, loot protected by fort level, 88 ducats is protected. And max loot is 138. Possible loot, 49.6, is the part that's not protected. So if we raided here, you just landed, you took the free gold and ran, you could get away with about 50 ducats. But if you sat here and sieged down every single one of these provinces, you would walk away with a minimum of 138. Because when you actually siege down a subholding, then you get a bonus of gold, as we will see up here. Because we are going to uh, siege this guy down. He doesn't have very much. He's only got 1.1. We're poor. Loot protected by 4 level, 4. Loot possible loot, 4.6. Max loot, 9. So we can take 4.6 gold. If we just sit here, you can see that we're slowly taking this money. And we're sending it home. It's not very noticeable. But it's happening. It's just it's such a small amount. Because we're so poor. And our neighbors are so poor. That's one of the things. Like, you get a lot of cool features with being a pagan, but the start can be a little slow in times in terms of cash. But there we go. We have looted to that bar. But if we click on the province again, you can toggle between the two with this lovely toggle siege view. You can hit Z to do it as well. Boop, boop, boop. And you can see that we have been sieging down this province. You know, 598 troops, 780. We've got more, so we're totally doing it. Up, oh, he did raise 530 troops, but the AI is typically smart enough not to attack us because we have more troops than him. 
A player, on the other hand, if you own this province yourself, you could raise up your 212 troops, send these guys over, and you might have a fighting chance. Uh, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> At the moment, we're going to siege this down. And... Bum -ba -dum. Oh, our heir. So here we go. Our heir. As he is growing older, I can see that Sargon could use some guidance in some of my experienced areas. I will require hard work and may not always be approached, but this be appreciated, but this is my chance to make a self-sacrifice for the sake of Sargon. So you will see this event quite often when you are educating your own children or even other people's children. And it's an interesting event. Especially when it's for your heir. Because for the first one, you say he deserves greatness, go get it. This means that you make your, your the child ambitious. Ambitious is wonderful. It's plus two to all stats. It's plus three to personal combat. And it does cause a same trait opinion. So other people that are ambitious dislike fellow ambitious people. And if you're against someone who's higher, there's an ambition opinion of minus 25. So it can make people hate you, but you become a more powerful character. It's a really good trait for your heir to have because you want them to be ambitious. Unless you're really doing some fun roleplay. Uh, other things you could do, so you could be through, you could make them diligent and then you become stressed. Which is minus the health, fertility, personal combat, stewardship, intrigue. It's not a good thing. Steward, stressed can kill you. Diligent is plus one to everything, so it's sort of a, a less powerful ambitious, but it doesn't give you the personal combat skill, but it gives you vassal opinion, and people like you for it. Uh, people that are slothful, the opposite trait, do not like you, though. Make your move at the right time. You can take a temporary out of patience for five years. Minus two to intrigue, diplomacy, stewardship, but you give your child patience. Which, just like Diligent, is a really good skill, except it gives personal combat instead, and defense is for when you're leading troops. Or you just say they learn on their own and nothing happens. If it's not your kid, your best bet is to do learn on their own, because you just, you don't want to take a malice. Often, unless I'm trying to get my ruler killed, I will not take stressed. A, this could be worth it sometimes, maybe if the kid's... You're really trying to get the virtues? That's your decision. This is kind of a bit of a role play and stuff. But, you know, we we are high chief. And we have great ambitions to be the king. We think that our son should also be ambitious. He will one day inherit our kingdom. And he needs to continue the line. We're also a little disappointed with him at the moment. So, if we feel that if he is becoming ambitious, maybe he'll improve himself. So, in terms of role play this fits and in terms of gameplay this fits because while he will hate us the most he'll may do is kill us and end our run early and but because we're not gavel kind it's not the end of the world it's not like we're a, a glorious character we're just solid so yeah you become ambitious my dear son it's fine it's all fine and see now his traits are better he's not likely to lose ambitious but now we are a rival, minus 100. He hates us. He really does. Oh, but here we go. So, we now you see that the, the bar has moved down to the end because we have completely raided this. It shows us looted. And for three years, they lose county tax. And the garrison and the levy now have to refill. We killed all the troops. It's not good. It's very bad when that happens to you. But, if we look up here, you can also change this to be like a big pop-up when you loot things. Um, you can change any notifications by going into message settings and wandering through and finding what you want. I have it up here, but we got an extra 1.27 ducats for burning down that tribe. And now there's a little more loot here. So we just stand here and we let the bar tick on down to take our last little few ducats. You know, stealing some chickens. Grabbing some baskets <laughs> whatever you want to imagine all right and also if you're going to be uh looting a more wealthy province you're going to get up to like 30 40 50 60 over 100 ducats when you loot down something cities are worth more because they have more taxes but castles and churches can be worth it too 
And there's another good thing about looting churches that are of a different religion, because, well, we can't see here because it hasn't happened here, but when you uh, loot someone's church that belongs to another religion, you get plus moral authority in your religion, and they get minus moral authority. So it's a pretty good thing. All right, so we have a mission here from the leader of our band of Meth Medinia, Meth Med Medicina, Medicina. It's come to our attention that your son Sargon remains outside of our fold. May we humbly urge you to talk to him about becoming a member of the band of, Med of Medicina like his father. So this means if we accept, we get a mission. Nope, wrong one. We get a mission to recruit our child. It shows his portrait, so you can click it. Um, conditions, it tells you. You hover over, it tells you to complete this mission, you need to right click on the portrait of your target and choose to recruit them. If the initiation is successful, you receive renown. However, your child fails the initiation, duel the mission fails. So here's renown, which we use to rank up, and we use to do different things, such as... None of these require renown. I don't think. Uh, yeah. Some do. But, so we are going to go to our child. We could have also done it from here. We can just right click here. Uh, and recruit to Warrior Lodge. Tells you what. Alright, so here we go. Recruit to Warrior Lodge. Do it. And we're gonna unpause. Alright, my very young son smiles broadly at my encouragement. I thought you would never ask. I'll contact Jedminius right away, father. This uh, event is only available when he's twelve years when he's twelve years old or she's twelve years old. It could happen with our daughters as well. Once they're twelve, we can also just choose to invite them ourselves. But depending on how you're playing and your role play, you may just want to uh, let it come up. And speaking of, our kids, our daughters do need educations. It did not prompt us for them up here. It's supposed to. Okay, but we're going to our daughter. She's not, she's, she can't even inherit, I don't think. Nope, she can't even inherit. So we're going to pick for her to become stewardship because any of the stewardship levels will increase her fertility. She might have more babies. That's a nice thing. Same for this last one. Why did I click marriage? There we go. We're also going to give her stewardship. If she had childhood traits, we might pick something different, but she doesn't. Uh, and our son here is zero. Our weak concubine child. Alright. So we're walking on out. Just a good thing. And now we need somewhere else to raid. Um, there we go. My very young son has joined me for dinner tonight and not stopped talking about his initiation duel. It was exhilarating, father, and now I am one of the band of Medicina. Knew you had it in you. So, everyone likes us more. We get 200 renown, we get 20 prestige, and our child is now part of the society with us. And we'll have more events that pop up because of him being in it. He does get, he did get wounded, which is minus one health and minus personal combat skill. He also has a swollen ankle, but that's temporary and this should heal. He probably will get scarred from it, which is fine. All right, I'm also gonna be attacking this man at some point in the future. So we're gonna go raid him. Well, this guy cools down and puts his forces down. It'll take him a little bit, but he will. And then we can go raid him again and beat up his other lands. We're just barely over there. He has 606 troops to raise there. It'll all work out. And if we go and look at our other troops, we show us having 968. If we go to military, we have 747 raised. Oh, 748, really? Okay. Um, and 222 that are still, you know, chilling at home. They're new recruits. Uh, and also, our total is now 1613. Want to bet it's because we come here and there's no more malices. So this place can now hold more troops. It's a good thing. And this man only has 530 troops. We're probably still going to go uh, loot the province because he's just going to hold it. He's going to be weak for a while. Alright. Feels like everyone is trying to trump me. My huntsmen killed more prey than I. My counselors found a better solution to the rebellious peasants than mine. And I started to feel that everyone was better than me no matter what. So, if they are better than me, then I have to accept that. 
We have a 45% chance to become kind. Kind is good for diplomacy. Plus two. Vassal opinions like us. Same trade opinion. But it hurts our personal combat score and hurts our intrigue. I envy them all. 45% chance of becoming envious. We get plus two intrigue. Minus one diplomacy. We get plus five, three personal combat skill. And liege opinion is plus, minus 15. We don't have a liege. We, don't, we are not under anybody. We are in charge. We do not care care about liege opinion so we do care to a point about personal combat skill we don't have much but we are from a warrior culture a warrior time in the history so we're going to totally be envious i envy them all we're also rather cruel and honest so why wouldn't we be honest with ourselves uh, there's only 45 percent chance we didn't get it and here's another good thing about looting as your men return from looting the holding, one of them hands you an axe with a strange purple sheen that and a plus etched into the handle, followed by the number two. After weighing it carefully in your hand, you toss aside your old gray axe in favor of this new weapon. I feel stronger. Adds plus two axe to the treasury. The aberration of a weapon must be destroyed. We need two prestige. Honestly, you're this early in the game? Nope, you don't want to destroy it. Because we have no treasury. I feel stronger. We get a plus two axe. We now have a treasury. Remember I said that wasn't likely we'd get items? Well, we got an item. It's a quality two axe. It gives us plus two martial and plus five personal combat skill. We're now 14, and it shows the plus two axe there when you hover it. Personal combat score is plus five. We're now better. Uh, you can always rename it. Rename the axe to whatever you want now. You can destroy the axe. Uh, you can also click on someone and give the axe away. And or you can unequip it. You can open the artifact history. You can see who has owned this axe. Just us. It got magically created during the raid. We didn't actually steal it from anyone. That's a good thing to have. Also, hovering over it shows you the original owner, when it was obtained, created, unknown date, because it was just a magically created item. It's a pretty good thing. Uh, yeah, and we're just going to take this free loot. Oops, I should have read that. I apologize. That was an event where you randomly improve one of your court, one of your commanders to be uh, better. Where there's a chance they'll become better with more martial. Bad habit, clicking through it because there's no choices. There's nothing. It's just oh, someone is becoming better. <laughs> all right, and we have stolen all of the money. We're going to wander back here, and then we're going to be ending this episode. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, and I will address them not in the next episode, but the episode after. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know, subscribe to the channel, help it grow. Bye y'all.